first man to blast off with $20 million plus debut. That is today's headline on Movie Burner News. And joining us as always is John, and this comes in from Variety, John. We're only weeks away from the film's release, and they're already predicting of a $20 million plus debut. Very impressive stuff, eh? It is, yes. It's only, I mean, it's only like a production budget of around about $70 million, Stephen. But when tax incentives were taken out, apparently it was closer to $60 million. So a $20 million budget, that's a third of its budget made back in its opening weekend. So you can't argue with that, and that's probably only in the United States. That's not taking into account international territories. For a film of this nature, it's more of an, uh, an award season uh, like push film. Certainly Ryan Gosling and the likes of Damien Chazelle, they're going for awards with this film. It's releasing in October, that's the beginning of that window when films look to vie for uh, the big awards. That's when they release their film. So it's not a big blockbuster film. It's not going to make like, $100 million <laughs> over the first week or two. So this is very decent. No, very but decent. we were only talking about Apollo 13 um, yeah. last week exactly. on uh, the Movie Burner blog rundown, John. And um, I'm not trying to compare the, the both films, um, certainly because I've not seen this one yet, but um, it's one of those films that has an interest. It has those historical values to it um, that a lot of people uh, you know, still remember uh, yeah. when, the, when these uh, events happened. And um, this Apollo 11 mission is going to mirror that movie Apollo 13 did very well, won two Oscars, um, as, as you recall, uh, back in 1995. Um, but we're getting ahead of ourselves here at the moment. I've not seen the film, we're already talking about Academy Awards and stuff like that. But oh, it's definitely going to be it, it's, gonna, it's yeah. definitely going to be in the minds of everyone yeah. c- when the Academy Awards comes around uh, early next year. Absolutely. And um, yeah, yeah it's, we're going to move on to the trailers in a little moment here, John, but... Um, those uh, early predictions is a very good sign for a film that's got quite a modest budget, mm-hmm. isn't it? It's it is, just, yeah. um, and Ryan Gosling, as we know, is starring as Neil Armstrong. But just looking at um, the other cast members, it's a, quite an ensemble of uh, very talented people. You've got Claire Foy there playing yeah. Armstrong's first wife. You've got Jason Clark. He appears in the trailer a couple of times as well, playing Ed White. And um, he was uh, one of the other astronauts. You've got the likes of Kyle Chandler in there, Corey Stoll, Kieran Hines and Christopher Abbott. And Jim Lovell as well, Stephen, played yeah. by Pavel Schreiber, of course, the man who was the main man in Apollo 13. And Didn't get you walking him in. We'll talk about the music as well yeah. uh, for these trailers. Um, I'm assuming this is from composer Justin Hurwitz. It is, who, yeah, the man that was involved in La La Land. Yeah, so he's got those connections with... Um, Ryan Gosling right away there yeah. um, and I think that some of his scores were involved in the trailers as well which we'll get round to in a little second but overall this is a movie that we've been keeping our eye on for the last mm, two or three months now since the first trailer dropped yeah. um, I've got to say that first trailer though um, it, it was okay mm-hmm. it wasn't very dramatical in any sense it no. was more a, they knew what was going to come in the next few trailers um, which would you know, lead up to the, the movie's release, but that first trailer was very, in my opinion, very subdued. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was kind of a focus, you know, on the more human aspect of the mission. I think this is what uh, Damien Chazelle's really trying to do. I'll, I'll get into it as we get further into this topic, the whole controversy surrounding this from a certain Egypt who was going on about the flag not being American and uh, the American flag not being placed on the moon. But he's trying to tell the story of the human side of these missions to the moon uh, and what, how it impacted on the family and stuff and you certainly see that in the first trailer it's, it's very much intimate uh, and introspective looking at the family you see his young child uh, his first wife <laughs> who we actually said watching the trailer Stephen she's a bit of a nag yeah. she's very negative she's very down on Neil when he's mission to be the first man to stand on the moon Jesus Christ it's a very noble mission being the first human or one of the first to step on another world yeah, and she's nagging away about these negatives. Yeah. Well, turns out you ditched her. He had another wife, and I'm not surprised. <laughs> don't remember Jim Lovell's wife acting like yeah, that, but yeah. I think you've got to take your mind back to a time when nothing like this happened before. Um, yeah. Certainly, they had their, their missions previous to this, but um, very limited technology. Um, th- there's no benchmark at this point, you know, as there was in Apollo 13, but nevertheless, um, this is a movie I cannot wait to see. Uh, we're only a few weeks away from it. Um, we'll move into the second trailer, John, um, just before we actually go into our main trailer topic. Uh, this trailer dropped actually last week, the third trailer. Yeah. Um, but 
we've got reasons for that, which we'll get into as well, why we weren't talking about it last week. Um, but that second trailer was more dramatical. Mm-hmm. I loved the music. It was very Hans Zimmer-esque. You know, yeah. it reminded me of a Dark Knight trailer, uh, that kind of frantic nature to it. It was such a contrast to the first trailer, um, where you've got more dialogue in that first one um, as you said it was more of the human aspect of it this one was more of the action um, yeah. I know this film's not going to be an action movie but um, there were some tense moments in there and um, I, that's when it picked up for me when I f- saw that second trailer which came out I think three, three four weeks, weeks ago yeah. or something just under a month ago um, this was the one that I was expecting to see at this point and um, I was on board at this point. Yeah, you've almost got it's almost got that metronomy type thing. It's ticking along very mm-hmm. consistently, ratcheting up the tension. I think the first shot we see of him maybe doing a test flight out of Earth's atmosphere, he grabs the pen. Mm-hmm. That was amazing. That was really cool. Ryan Gosling looks incredible. He's Neil Armstrong, incidentally. I can totally see this guy winning an Oscar for this performance. I think you deserve it because <laughs> the guy's been amazing in a, quite a few films I've seen him in. Done a, an incredible job of swerving out the whole rom com stick that he was in, he was getting typecast as that type of a yeah. actor. Now he's uh, really diversified his work. Certainly started with Drive, I think, yeah. back in the day. And now he's really became yeah. a great actor. Certainly, and you see it in the this He's certainly taken that route that Leonardo DiCaprio had to yeah. go through. And to an extent, Ryan Reynolds as well, you know. Yeah. So um, you, c- you can see it and you're right, John. I think Drive was the one that sort of kick-started yeah. his career, took it in another direction. Because at that point, you're right, it was... Um, doing he was doing it. yeah those rom coms and he's a great actor. I'm not knocking his previous work. Um, one of the first films I saw him in was a Sandra Bullock film. Uh, he was very young in it and he was very good. You know he stood yeah. out. He was that just that had that presence in the film even at that early age. Um, but as you said, he did these rom coms for a while and thankfully he went off on another track. Yeah. Did drive and I don't think he's looked back since. Well, he's a very funny guy as well. You've seen him uh, some of his skits with Bill Ferrell and stuff on the. Uh, Kimmel, yeah. I mean, even his, the, the, the nice guys, he's amazing in that comedy film and parts as well, buddy film, you see in this what the guy's capable of, he's done musicals and now he's doing a biopic drama piece about Neil Armstrong, but I'm getting sidetracked here, the second trailer, Stephen, very much, as you said, ratcheting up the action and the tension, you see them getting more and more out into space, you see a shot of him looming down into a, a crater on the moon, and that's something we see again and again. We see that moment as well with the blackboard, the chalk going from Earth to the Moon. Mm. If only it was that easy to get to the Moon. It's not that easy. But and the first trailer was it's very much focusing on the family. We see elements of that again. Of I think it's Janet Armstrong nipping his head again. Uh, <laughs> it's showing you more and more of the, them getting ready to move to the Moon. We see you're seeing something like you're only little boys or something. You don't know what you're doing. What a lot of crap. They do know what they're doing. They got to the moon. <laughs> Unless you're a conspiracy theorist and you think it was all in a set in there in LA. Which uh, some think I don't. But then we move on to that third trailer, Stephen, and again it's just ups the ante. But we're, we're getting I don't think as much music. It's all set to the, the monologues of uh, GFK doing his famous speech in the early sixties. I can't remember the date. Might have been sixty two, might have been sixty one. But he basically says we want to get a man on the moon by the end of a decade. Of course we did. He didn't see it. Again, conspiracy theories would get into why that is. I'm not going to. This isn't a conspiracy theory podcast. It's a movie show. Uh, and I love that trailer as well. Love some of the shots. And amazing visuals. We're seeing fires breaking out and some things like that. Uh, we're seeing more and more of them getting ready to go onto the moon. I think we even... <laughs> I'm tripping here, Stephen. We've seen him going on the moon in the second trailer. And we certainly see him going on the moon in this one. He's doing that little lullaby thing that he was doing to his kid mm-hmm. back in the house. That was an amazing shot. Uh, just hearing him saying the one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind line, again incredible. And that'll get into that flag issue here while I'm on that subject. Yeah. Some idiot, I don't know who the hell it was, was criticising Chazelle in the film in general uh, by saying uh, that it was a disgrace basically that they, they didn't put the American flag down at the end of the film. And Chazelle addresses this by saying that he was surprised by the controversy because there are multiple historical moments that he opted to leave out in the film. He basically says in general, I'll paraphrase it, but he says that this wasn't about America, this is about greater mankind. It was a moment about mankind and their achievement. So he didn't want to get too into the whole hoorah American thing. And I actually says that in my review of Apollo 13 as well, that was a great thing. Yeah. He didn't get caught up in the whole God save, God bless America and the hoorah and all that crap, but yeah. they've kept it low key and you have to do this. Yeah. This is focusing on Neil Armstrong on Buzz Aldrin, on Jim Lovell, the other guy, showing the humanity to these missions to the moon. And I think that's important. And I know this guy will get the balance right. He's a fantastic director. 
Josh Singer done the screenplay as well, based on the James R. Hansen book, all about Neil Armstrong. So they'll get this right, they'll get the balance right. I'm sure they'll retcon it now and they'll get that American flag in there to appease some of the lunatic fringe over there. And I'm no for a fact they'll get it right. They'll get the right people yeah. on board here from the cinematographers all the way through. Yeah, I think I'm going to say a very Glasgow famous saying here, John. Yeah. Every man in a dug knew uh, that Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, etc. were Americans. Mm-hmm. Uh, we know the story. We don't need to have it um, visually explained to us yeah. with an American flag. But um, listen, I get the, I get what they're trying to say, but the, you know, they're, they're trying to find fault with um, what looks to be a very good film. Yeah. Um, I don't think the director's going to be that bothered about it. Yeah. I don't think they're going to put any special editions out there with flag included. Um, this is not what this film is about. No. Um, it's about human achievement. It doesn't matter where you're from. Um, and as I said, we all know um, who got to the who won the space race it was the US, and it's it's just a great film. It's also great to see that third trailer, the interactions, uh, very brief interactions between Neil Armstrong and, and Buzz Aldrin. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's one of those relationships that I've never really looked into to see how these guys handled the way their lives were after their achievements <laughs> and if, hiding, Stephen? yeah they probably <laughs> did John you know and I can understand that you know um, this is something that's um, it's life changing um, not just for them but for everyone and um, I just can't wait to see the film now we're only a few weeks away from it um, but I've got to say the, um, the way that they've, they've marketed this movie um, over the last three months has been really good. Mm-hmm. The first trailer, as I said, it was more an emotional point of view. The second one was more dramatic yeah. and the third one was more from a it was more from a political point of view as well when you've got the, the JFK narration in there and um, what uh, the US are trying to achieve at this point in um, their history. And it, all, all the three trailers were great. I think we'll start to see the trailers uh, the TV trailer spots mm-hmm. now um, coming out maybe over the next few weeks. I certainly look forward to them because sometimes you do get a little additional scenes in there that weren't in the, any of the trailers. But we're going to move on, John, to yes. our next topic. And um, this show this week is actually very heavily trailer-based. Yeah. Um, one of the reasons for this was that the, the first Man trailer, which came out last week, um, came out um, the same week as the Stan and Ollie one mm-hmm. and Mary Poppins Returns. And the reason we didn't really want to cover them last week is because of the Joaquin Phoenix Joker uh, first shots, which uh, there's a bit of development there as well. We've mm-hmm. seen a little clip on Instagram Amazing. from the director, which was very good. And also the Captain Marvel trailer dropped as well, um, which we covered as well on early editions. But uh, we're going to start today with the Stan and Ollie trailer, John. This stars Steve Coogan and John C. Reilly. Steve Coogan playing Stan Laurel and John C. Reilly playing Oliver Hardy. What was your take on this? I thoroughly enjoyed it. I didn't know about this film, Stephen, until maybe a month and a half ago. I think we spoke about it in a previous episode. Looks incredible. Looks in a really authentic period piece. I love the visuals. They look amazing. The suits, the costume design, the set design, it all looks incredible. Steve Coogan is just possessed by the spirit of Stan Laurel. His voice is nailed on. He looks like him. Uh, same with John C. Reilly and Oliver Hardy. He's got the voice bang on. He's got the looks bang on. They look like they've got amazing chemistry. These guys look like they're playing Laurel and Hardy. They look as though the relationships there. They look as though they've been people who have been together in a working relationship for a number of decades. And we see some things that I didn't realise ex- happened with these two. Uh, also, it's a farewell tour in the late, uh, in the early 1950s, I should say, 1953, uh, through Britain and Ireland. They go on a variety tour, and they start facing pressures and stuff like that. The hectic schedule. The, they get support from their wives, but we see a little warring moments there. They fall out. I didn't realise they actually fell out at any point. Obviously, they must have. That happens in life in general. That's human nature. People will fall out, certainly when they're close. We've seen it with the Beatles. Paul McCartney, John Lennon, George Harrison, punching w- wives over stolen biscuits and stuff like that. Bricks came through. Ringo getting a hook because they weren't releasing albums at the right time. So if it can happen with those guys, it can certainly happen with Laurel and Hardy. And it did, apparently. Yeah, uh, John S. Baird uh, directs uh, with a script from Oscar-nominated screenwriter Jeff Pope Mm -hmm. uh, who wrote Philomena, another amazing film starring Steve Coogan. Yes. Um, 
this time as well, I think this was round about, they were coming to the end of their careers here as well. You've got to remember, John, um, yeah. Oliver Hardy, I think he had a lot of health problems um, at this point in his life as well. But you're right, I and mean, this is a side that we don't get to see. Um, you know I've got the box set of um, Laurel and Hardy, um, the DVDs, and I like to get back to them every now and again, but from their personal lives, um, I don't know too much about them. Um, I know their backgrounds, where they came from, etc., but their relationship, at the, certainly at this point in their careers as well, looked very strained um, from what we saw from this trailer. But um, the thing that I picked up was the um, the voices of the two actors, Coogan and Riley. Um, I thought that they nailed the accents, the, the way they delivered their lines as well was very... Um, very identical to the to the actors, yeah. um, and hats off, bowler hats off, <laughs> to both actors because Steve Coogan, who I've been a fan of his for the last twenty five years, I never really regarded him as a great actor, um, but in this movie he seems to just embody Stan Laurel, um, right down to his mannerisms. And those little funny one-liners as well, John. Yeah, um, just the look and the feel of this film. This is what I'm looking forward to. Um, I, I know we we talked about um, we talked about this film. I think a few months ago. Yeah. Uh, I think it's coming out at the start of next year. Is that right? I think it's yeah. January time or yeah, something like that. Yeah, it's very early. I think January time. Uh, but I, you're absolutely right. The interactions between the two are nailed on. Much like what we say in the the first man stuff. Early on in this trailer. You see the human side of the characters, the two men, uh, having their squabbles and stuff. We see the support of their wives trying to get them back on track. We see Oliver Hardy almost walking away, I think, and then he comes mm-hmm. back to the hotel room. We get that amazing song from Inception, I believe it's called Non Gene. Yeah. I regret to the end, I can't even say it. Ed of Piaf, it's a great song, love that song. That kick starts and that kind of a, that kick starts the trailer off and it gives us a, the start of the business side of the, the two characters or the two men, we see them then getting on the stage and doing their act we see that patronising woman as well saying oh, it's great to see you're still together, still using the same material or something yeah. like that, yeah, but it's amazing just seeing the two of them becoming these men doing what the, the slapstick act that they did back in the day, they're on the feet they're just possessed as I did say, I'm looking at some of the posters as well, they're coming soon, they just look bang on, it's incredible yeah. Absolutely incredible, but I just I love the way it's split. You had the personal side at the start, we see the squabbles, and then we see them getting back together. I think actually Stan Laurel, point officer Steve Coogan, says it towards the end, the middle end, that I love him. Yeah. And then he comes back through the door, and then we see them getting it back together, getting through this hectic schedule that they've got, farewell, farewell tour, getting back to what they do best. And there's a great line as well, um, I'll miss us when we're gone, and if Stan Laurel, I believe, replies with you'll miss this tour, something along those lines. But that was a great quote, great line. And the dialogue looks amazing, as I said, amazing period piece. The music looks great. I can't wait to see this film, and I firmly believe this will be uh, have a part to play in the, the Oscars and just the awards season in general as well. They're setting it up for that. Yep. I'm um, just looking at it, John. It currently has a January 11th, 2019 release date here in the UK. Mm-hmm. However, the release plan for the US hasn't been yet revealed, I'm sure. Um, that will be revealed yeah. Over the next few weeks, certainly since this trailer has dropped now, the promotion has begun. So, mm-hmm. certainly looking forward to this. Big okay. fan of John C. Reilly, big fan of Steve Coogan, and a big fan of Laurel and Hardy. So, yes. let's get everything there that I want. And um, we're going to move on to our next trailer. This is actually the second trailer. Uh, we talked about the first trailer, John, when it first dropped. We did this is Mary Poppins Returns. Um, this movie is coming out uh, Christmas time. It's it um, filling in that void that Star Wars had for a few years. So, um, for a kickoff, I'm not happy with that, but um, <laughs> that's that's where Star Wars should be. Solo should be coming out then, but um, well, should. but I should be having my body nutmeg <laughs> Starbucks special. What is going yes, on here? I should what was, the, was it uh, the gingerbread latte? That that's was disgraceful. Our, yeah, it was our tradition over the last three Christmases. And Damn we were, you, Disney! We certainly were getting used to it. Um, certainly, if you want, John, we can still go for that Starbucks if you want to go yeah. and see this film. <laughs> 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 but um, oh, listen, I'll be taking my daughter to see this movie. I know she likes Starbucks as well. Um, but uh, the trailer, Emily Blunt stars as the famous nanny, replacing mm-hmm. um, Julie Andrews from the 1964 classic. Mm-hmm. Um, this is everything that the first film has it in 
terms of look, feel, the sound as well, uh, animations, which we'll go into in a little while, yep. and we get to see a little glimpse of Angela Lansbury, who is no stranger to a Disney musical. No, she isn't. I thoroughly enjoyed this trailer, Stephen, much more than the first trailer. first trailer was more of a teaser, though. We get a short little sight of Mary Poppins. She comes out of the sky, and then we see her looking at a mirror or something, and then it's very much over. That's when we see more of her. See our relationship with the... I believe it's the grown-up kids from the first film they're playing. Yeah, yeah, the bank's children. As you can tell, I've never seen the first film. Criminal, I know. We go back and watch it before going to see this. Mm -hmm. But they say, what the hell, you're not even Asian. She replies with, never ask a woman's age or something along those lines. I'm paraphrasing. But very posh. She's nailed the voice. Um, I've seen clips of the original film. This is magical in every sense of the word. Very much fitting for the time of the year. I can see this being a, an unbelievable hit for Disney. We were talking about Christopher Robin in yesterday's box office chat, mm-hmm. Stephen. How it's been a bit disappointing in terms of box office performance. This will not be disappointing. This will be a hit all over the world. I'm absolutely sure of it. It's getting musical elements. It's got an amazing period setting. And it's absolutely magical. The score, the visuals I mentioned to you, Stephen, watching the trailer again. The visuals are very vibrant, very colourful. Looks like something straight out of the golden era of Hollywood. And the musical elements as well looks like something straight out of the golden era of Hollywood. It looks very much like Gene Kelly singing in the rain style stuff. We've got them swinging off of lampposts. We've got the old man jumping up on the table dancing. Amazing trailer. You get everything you'd expect from a film like this. I probably will go and watch this even though yeah. it's really my cut of tea. The old man, I think, was Dick Van Dyke. John. Dick Van Dyke. 92 Jesus year Christ. old and he's moving like that. Um, I didn't even realise that was him. My God. Certainly puts Incredible. me to shame. But um, it's good to see returning actors. Uh, Dick Van Dyke um, is synonymous with this uh, original movie. Are we getting Meryl um, Streep in there as well? Meryl Streep, yeah. Colin Firth, I think we're getting the cast of Mamma Mia actually. Um, <laughs> there's a few in there. Uh, Julie Walters, I think, is in there as well. But um, the one that I do want to see, um, whether or not we get it or not, is going to be another thing, is yeah. an appearance from Julie Andrews, mm-hmm. the original Mary Poppins, where or not she will make a cameo. Mm-hmm. Certainly we're looking at that poster. It's a great poster, isn't it? Yes. Looking, you've got all the actors at the top there. There's no mention of her, unless it's going to be a little surprise. I would like to think that she's going to make some form of appearance, but then again, I don't know what her relationship with the film, the original film, the 1964 film, is these days. I don't know whether or not she's put it all behind her, doesn't like to talk about it. A lot of actors are like that. You've just got to look at the likes of Harrison Ford. Um, There was a long period in time where he didn't want to talk Star Wars. So I don't know what her relationship is with this movie, whether or not she looks back on it fondly or if it's in the past. Um, Certainly if she looks at it fondly, then... There is hope that we might see a little appearance there. Certainly, we're talking of TV here. Um, that appearance, cameo appearance from Tom Baker in The Day of the Doctor, John, um, yeah. that was such an epic moment to have that actor back. Yeah. Um, so after such a long time, you're talking maybe about 30 years. This is a bit longer. You're talking over 40 years, 40, 50 years since uh, the original movie. And it would be great to see Julie Andrews making some sort of appearance. But if she doesn't, she doesn't. I think don't think it's going to affect the film anyway. It's going to be a massive success. As you said, John, I predict it's going to be a massive success as well. Yeah. Um, and Disney are on to a winner here, especially at time of year. Yeah, absolutely. Was that uh, when Tom Baker walked up to... Was it John Hutt? He was a curator. Yeah, he walked yeah, up in the museum, yeah. That was, yeah. Yeah, that was something else. Uh, as a Doctor Who fan, that is... Not get any connection to this whatsoever, but I'd love to see the character coming back because I'm sure it would be a special and magical moment. In terms of other magical moments, the final thing I'll touch upon is the playing between cartoon and live action. That was incredible, seeing the, the little birds skin up and then it, the background turned into full cartoon. Incredible. Uh, very unique. And certainly uh, this film is absolutely going to be a monstrous success. Disney have already grossed $6.4 billion worldwide this year. They're going to add to it with this. No danger whatsoever. And incidentally, that line I was talking about was one never discusses a woman's age, Michael. It's written in the article. You seem hardly of age at all, was the, what Michael said to her. So, I digress. I'm gibbering on. Amazing trailer. Much better than the first one. And this film is going to be incredible. I've no doubt about it. But we're going to move on to the final topic in this week's Movie Burner News. And it's Bond 25 getting a new director. It's Carrie Hodgie Fukunagi. I don't know how, how the hell that's pronounced. I hope that is the way it's pronounced. But he's a new director for the 007 film. The question is, is it going to be Daniel Craig, Stephen, that's starting on it? I believe it will be, because his name is at the top of the statement. But there was talk of a certain Henry Cavill coming in and replacing him. The film's not started shooting yet, so it may still happen. I hope it does. 
I think John, this is uh, Daniel Craig's swan song, so yeah, I think he's going to remain in this. One of the reasons um, Danny Boyle is no longer part of this project is, um, I think, I don't want to say it's because of Daniel Craig, but um, I think this is, um, there was conflict, yeah, there um, was. you know, in production and stuff like that. I think it's fair to say that. Yeah, it's creative but, direction, yeah. Yeah, so um, it's definitely Daniel Craig is on board for this one, one final time. But you're right, I think there's a lot of talk about um, Henry Cavill possibly filling his shoes certainly he's he's got the he's got the credentials to to take on that franchise i think he's certainly got the look he's got the capabilities as we saw in the latest mission impossible movie that he can do action um out with comic book and um just looking at the director john this uh carrie joji fukunaga i think that's how you pronounce it anyway um First American guy to helm a, a Bond film, Stephen. That's yeah, yeah. shook up things a little bit. I've seen was, people a little bit dismayed at that. I don't give a shit. Yeah, he was one of the writers on It, uh, the, yeah. the 2017 release Good as, well. as well. And um, just looking at uh, his previous work, um, I'm not very familiar. I know Jane Eyre. I know that uh, film from 2011. But since yeah. then, he's done a few mini series on TV, True Detective, mm-hmm. Maniac as well. Don't know a lot about him. Um, seems to be coming in. Um, at, uh, I mean, that's quite a, a gamble, if if, you, if yeah. you know what I mean. Certainly, if this is going to be Daniel Craig's final film, taking on a James Bond film as well, or such. I'm not saying that he's a rookie director. He's certainly um, he's got a lot of credits being a writer and producer as well. Um, but I'm just not overawed by his directoral CV here. Mm-hmm. Um, there's not a lot there to suggest that he's the right man for the job certainly not anything saying that he's the wrong man for the job yeah. either but um, certainly a strange um, decision to yeah. appoint um, someone that's not got a lot of um, background in this sort of genre No, I think his best uh, work Stephen is probably beast of no nation of all he obviously starred Didris Elber another man who's been touted to be the next Bond for a number of years now sadly that's not happened either because I'd love to see Idris playing Bond but clearly People don't want a black bond, because you know that'd be sacrilege. Just like you can't have anything other than a white Superman. Mm. A fem- or a male, or a female yeah, doctor. Yeah, or a female doctor who? <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. But yes, I digress. I can't lie out with Peace of No Nation, True Detective. He hasn't really had a stellar directorial career by any means. But I do think one of the big uh, issues between Danny Boyle and uh, the people involved in this was that it was creative conflict over a number of things. <coughs> uh, the direction of the villain, they wanted some obscure Polish guy in, Daniel Craig. He was talking about killing Bond off and doing a whole Doctor Who style thing, chopping and changing the the, the person playing 007, yeah. getting rid of James Bond. That was a bone of contention. Barbara Broccoli as well, this producer, apparently was trying to throw her weight around. She wanted to use a set script that was already in place. Danny Boyle wanted to shake things up, bring his own writers in. So clearly... <laughs> Uh, without criticising Fukunaga too much, because I don't know anything about the guy in a personal way, clearly they've got a guy in who they can tell, listen, this is what you're doing, you're using this script, we'll do this, we'll do that, Daniel Craig will throw things in and he's not going to rock the boat like a Danny Boyle would. So they're getting a guy in who knows what he's doing to an extent, he's done Beast of No Nation, very successful film, but he's not going to rock the boat, yeah. he's going to be a yes man of sorts. That's some, my take from yeah, it. Some of the feedback from this article, John, um, people that probably know more of uh, Fukunaga. Yeah. Um, his background as well are actually warming to this decision. They're saying some of some of these people here are saying it's the best news. Um, some saying True that he's a, a great series. You know, he's in that he's in the classic mode of uh, James Cameron, or Chris Nolan, or Tarantino and Spielberg. <laughs> um, uh, I don't know if that's stretching it a bit far. Yeah. We'll soon see, though. I mean, I certainly hope so. Um, you know, I think it's always good to get uh, these young directors in and. and you know, give them these opportunities, mm-hmm. and um, a lot of people saying he's a, he's a good choice. He's a very talented guy. Um, you know, a lot of people saddened that you know Danny Boyle's not having the opportunity now because um, uh, they certainly think that um, it would have been an interesting choice and um, the direction he would have taken. But the feedback so far has been very good, so yeah. we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, I mean certainly. By all accounts, people that know about the guys work out with those two things I mentioned. They were great things, by the way. Beast of No Nation was a great film. And True Detectives is a fantastic series, so he is a talented guy. Certainly, but I just think he's not going to rock the boat in general, like Danny Boyle would. He's a solid director, it will come in and do uh, the script that's put in front of him justice. 
and, and I'm sure it'll all work out in the end. I'm not a massive Bond fan, but I mean, I've seen quite a few, but I'm not a die-hard Bond fan, so to be honest with you, I don't really care either way. <laughs> but um, listen, Dan, I hope Daniel Craig gets a good send-off. He's been great as a character, joking aside. Um, I've enjoyed most of the films he's been involved in, certainly better than Buddy Pierce Brosnan's Bond, who was absolutely crap for me. Not a patch on Conray, though. He's, to me, he's still the man. You can take your Roger Moore and shove him up your ass. No, only kidding. I like Roger as well. Sadly passed away very recently. Uh, I digress though. I'm giving it away here. I'm not too flummoxed by this decision. I'm sure it'll all work out well. And then we'll get Henry Cavill or Idris Elba in after this. They do bond again. But that just brings us to the end of this week's episode of Movie Burner News. We'd just like to thank you for listening to us once again. And we'll be back tomorrow with the Movie Burner blog rundown. Remember guys, if you enjoyed that episode, then do hit that like button, comment below and maybe subscribe to the channel if you haven't done already. If you want to follow us on social media for all the latest updates for Movie Burner Entertainment, then we can be found on Twitter and Facebook at Movie Burners. You can also listen to us on Google Play and iTunes at the Movie Burner Podcast. And last but not least, if you want to access all the latest written reviews and the occasional article, then that can be found on our website at movieburnerentertainment.org. Until the next time, goodbye.